Hi, it's Louise Spiral Bright Insight back again to just share some observations on the energies of this coming weekend. Um, because yeah, there's there's quite a lot to say really. And um again, you know, I'm just gonna pick out a couple of the things that stand out in the chart. Um, so if you're new to my channel, I'm an intuitive and a galactic astrologer. So I work um with fixed star and cosmic point energy as well as traditional astrology. But um, what I've been looking at is over this weekend, we have the sun is going to activate quite a few fixed stars and also um, a particular dwarf planet. So I'll talk about that. But we've also got um, Mercury and Uranus being um, fairly activated along with Mars. So there's quite a lot going on. Um, and just to say, I'm very new to dwarf planets. I've been um, looking at is it, um, Alan Clay's book, um, New Stars for a New Era. And one of the dwarf planets that he teaches about, Orcus, is in an exact alignment, exact conjunction with the sun tomorrow at 15 degrees of Virgo. Now, Orcus is very much associated with the underworld. He's, it's very Plutonian in terms of symbolism and energy. It's said that he was one of the gods of the underworld whose task was to punish those who broke their oaths and torment sort of evil and wrongdoers in the afterlife. Um, so, you know, there's some quite sort of dark associations with this dwarf planet, but um, it also represents the truth and the search for truth, very much aligned with honesty and with authenticity and bringing the truth to light. So where things have been hidden um, or concealed, you know, this is about revelation and bringing the truth up to the surface to be seen. And um, there's also kind of very karmic themes with this dwarf planet planet and the feeling or the knowledge and the um, sense that all actions have consequences so and you must always be accountable for everything that you do and that is a universal truth so even though it may seem you know that throughout lifetimes um you know that you know people who do commit wrong doings or you know have are have corrupt behavior and actions there's not always consequences for them to deal with but actually the universal law states that yes there is so this is very much um the, with the sun activating this dwarf planet orcas it's like shining a light on some of these themes so that's kind of the first thing that we are dealing with. So it's very much um, shining a light on seeking out the truth. <laughs> um, so alongside that, we have got the sun, um, which is opposing Saturn now. Um, Saturn's at 16 degrees of Pisces. So it will be exact on Sunday, this opposition. But the sun is opposing two fixed stars. One is Arcanar in the Eridanus constellation, Eridanus being the river and Arcanar having a really strong association with elemental energy, particularly elven, sort of magical, um, yeah, mythical being type frequencies. So whenever we're working with Arcanar, I'm always drawn to the kind of metaphor for the river as a spiritual journey, as a metaphor for our spiritual journey, how we are always invited to stay in flow, to trust the path of the river, you know, not to necessarily try and control the flow of the water, the speed, the direction, but knowing that ultimately, you know, the water is only going in one direction. You know, if you try and reverse the direction, you're only going to create a massive blockage which will eventually um, create a dam and overflow um, but you know the, the water is always heading towards the mouth of the um, ocean or the sea which effectively is symbolic for that kind of um, the void at the end of of everything which is stepping into the void into unity consciousness into the great unknown so you know it is very much a metaphor for our spiritual journey and our spiritual path it also brings through 
the um, symbolism of the wisdom of water and the energy and the knowledge that water carries and the fact that it is alive, that it has, you know, some really magical, very special powers. And again, you know, this is something that we are starting to learn more about. Um, and also the Eridanians are very, as a race, are very um, linked to helping us to dismantle false stories and timelines, which I thought was really interesting, especially when you think about out, you know the fact that Orcus is also opposing Arcana, um, and Orcus is very much invested in making sure that everybody is accountable for their actions and that the truth is revealed. And um, in addition to Arcana, we also have the Anchor Star, fixed star in the Phoenix constellation. Again, that is very um, aligned with Saturn at the moment, so it's opposing the Sun. The Sun is shining a light on the energy, and this is really about deep transformation, shedding layers of the old, having the faith that when you let go and you almost burn everything to the ground, that something new is going to rise from the ashes and that it can be really magical and really powerful and take flight like the Phoenix. So again, some really beautiful sort of um, themes here, moving from dark to light, death and rebirth, transformation, magic, etc. Now, um, the fact that the sun is opposing Saturn is kind of... Um, you know, helping us to almost master our spiritual journey in many ways. It's kind of helping us to see clearly as well, because the sun in Virgo is very much about using discernment, having that clarity of thought and mind, you know, having the details and being able to drill down into what exactly is going on. Um, but certainly, you know, Saturn in opposition Yes, there might be a, a momentary pause. You know, it could be, you know, like you have to almost take a step back because Saturn does restrict and slow down. But equally, it also brings gravitas and mastery to the table. So, um, you know, it's 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 a really quite um, exciting opposition to be working with. And along with that, so that's the Sun and Saturn. Now we've got Mercury at 27 degrees of Leo is conjunct Alphard in Hydra. I've talked about that star before, but that is very much about awakening of consciousness of our Kundalini energy, of our Shakti energy, um, you know, awakening to higher truths, shedding layers, letting go, and very much connecting to the divine feminine energies as well. Um, but alongside that conjunction, there is Uranus in an exact square. Um, so, you know, Uranus is, again, been really active because this last week, because he stationed retrograde. So Uranus is retrograde. So, you know, but there is some quite um, potential disruption, shocks, surprising information coming forward through this square. It's creating tension. Something has to give. Mercury wants to shine a light on something. Uranus wants to use it to awaken hearts and minds and really raise consciousness even further and wake us up. So, you know... And with Orcus, you know, <laughs> on the table as well, activating the sun, it's like, wow, what is going to come forward here? Um, and then just to add a few extra things, really, because, you know, as if that is not enough. Mars in Cancer is trining the Shapley attractor. I have referred to that in my recent video about Mars in Cancer. But this is really sort of having cosmic support to strip away anything that is not of truth and integrity. So, you know, really very strong black hole magnetic energy pulling away um, anything that is not of truth. Um, pulling away masks, pulling away veils, helping us to really connect with our authentic selves and the authenticity of our world and our existence. And the moon is also going to come along and come join with the Shapley Attractor. So again, you know, it, that's going to potentially, you know, add an extra um, emotional element. And of course, the moon in Scorpio is encouraging us to dig down, to dig deep, to see what has been hidden, you know, which ultimately is all about deep healing and transformation. So you can kind of see there's some really powerful energy going on. Um, and I just noticed as well that Jupiter at 19 degrees of Gemini is approaching a sextile with Chiron in Aries. Now it's not going to get exact um, because Jupiter will retrograde, but he's going to get really close to this an exact, almost exact um sextile but again this is about jupiter expanding our understanding giving us new information you know and 
sort of helping our belief system and our mindsets to increase and evolve and sort of go beyond um, in order to support the healing of our wound in Aries, which is our kind of crisis of identity. Who are we? Um, you know, how do we fit in? Are we good enough? All of that. So um, that is also really interesting. Then on Monday, once we've had that crazy weekend of energy, um, it's the 9-9 portal. It's the ninth um, day of the ninth month. Um, so, you know, this is very much an energy of endings, of letting go, of being so we can move forward. So that's interesting in itself. But on the same day, Mercury moves into Virgo. Now, Virgo is ruled by Mercury. So Mercury is really, really strong in this sign. And this is going to really give us some strong clarity of thought, of mind, of word, of understanding. It's going to help us to really drill down into the detail to get get the facts to pull you know all the information together and to try and make sense of it and discern what is true what is not and you know how we can sort of digest it as well because Virgo is very much about digesting but it's also sort of harvesting you know where we have put in the work getting reaping the rewards there's so many um beautiful energies associated with Virgo, which again, I talked about in my recent New Moon video. So yeah, really quite interesting, really intriguing. So we'll see what comes to light. Obviously, you know, it's not always at a sort of collective level, you know, this can be deep personal individual truths coming forth um, that, you know, you need to connect to, you need to understand, you need to see and you need to feel into at this time. Um, but, you know, it's very much whatever is going in within is also happening without um, and vice versa. So have an amazing weekend. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon.